everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's just me today, Carly, but if you're new here, we'd love it if you would subscribe before you leave. Um, today I'm doing a bit of a different video. I had mentioned a while back that I was struggling with perioral dermatitis, it's a skin condition, and now that I'm kind of in the clear, I wanted to do a video on tips and tricks and what really worked for me getting rid of this. Okay, so first we can start with what perioral dermatitis is so that if you have similar symptoms, you may be able to self-diagnose. So basically, the definition is inflammation of skin around the mouth. And my dermatologist told me that it's basically any sort of rash that is around the nose or around the mouth. So um, I think that it, it, for me, it was very easy to diagnose. I kind of noticed a small piece of um, red flaky skin next to my nose as the first kind of sign of this rash and it slowly grew and kind of moved into the folds of um, my nose here like where your smile lines are and then it grew more and it got um, all over around my mouth and at that point I went to the dermatologist but I've read a lot of um, different like Reddit threads or just watch videos and read the comments and a lot of people misdiagnose themselves and they think that it's just acne flaring up, like adult onset acne. And if you treat perioral dermatitis like you treat acne, it'll make it significantly worse. So that brings me to my first uh, advice, which would be going to see a dermatologist as soon as you can. I definitely made this worse before I went in. Um, when I first saw that patch of redness by my nose, I used a steroid cream on it that had been prescribed for something else. And that is the first no-no of perioral dermatitis. I'm going to refer to it as PD from here on out. But you're not supposed to use steroid cream. It makes it a lot worse. It can inflame the skin even worse on this particular rash. And basically what it did for me was made it spread a lot more and then once I stopped using the steroid cream because I could tell it was making it worse, um, my dermatologist told me that at that point your skin kind of uh, is is trying to lessen it's, it. It's basically so used to the steroid cream that once you go cold turkey, it'll get worse before it gets better. So I'm going to try to insert photos of this whole journey for me, but I don't have any when it was really bad just because I was very self-conscious of my skin and I didn't take a lot of photos, but I do have some that show um, when the rash had spread around my mouth um, in a way that you can see. Okay, so I have notes here of everything, what worked for me, what didn't, um, but I'll start with my dermatologist visit because I do think it's so important to see a dermatologist and to find one that you really trust. I had read so many horror stories of people that had this and they went in and their dermatologist either prescribed them steroid cream, which makes it worse, or um, really heavy antibiotics, which I didn't want. So I'm really happy that I found a dermatologist that I really trust and love and he's he definitely is gentle on the skin and that's something I really appreciated. So when I first went in, he diagnosed me with PD and then he prescribed me two things. So um, one of them is basically an antibiotic that I think it can be used on the face, but this one he told me to put in my nose because he said, and this can be really gross, but he said that the two causes of PD are generally bacteria or fungus. And he said that a lot of people have staph bacteria living in their nose. And um, at the level it's at, it's very um, safe and it's not har not harmful. But if it grows and kind of um, escapes the nose, it can start to be harmful. And that's when a rashes can appear. So he said to apply this um, inside my nose two times a day. So I did it in the morning, which was a little bit difficult because you kind of like blow your nose throughout the day. Um, and then at night and just kind of let it sit in there. But it was very simple and non-abrasive, very easy. Um, I would say that this is on my list of something that I think helped the situation, but I'm not 100% sure. There's other things that I know um, helped more. So I did this, and then he also gave me samples of Sulantra, which is a rosacea medication, because he said that uh, PD is technically a form of rosacea, but they are so different and that he didn't know at that time if it was rosacea. So he gave me samples and later um, I just picked up a full size at the pharmacy. This is very expensive medication. So if it's not rosacea, I don't recommend it. Um, at this point, I know 100% this did nothing for me. Um, I'm a little regretful of paying the money I did for it. But um, regardless, I appreciated that he wanted to treat basically all the symptoms and just treat 
things simultaneously just in case um, to make sure that it cleared up as fast as it could. Uh, if you have rosacea, I've heard good things about this, but it just didn't work for my particular um, incident. And then after that first visit, I did a lot of research myself because he said to come back in two weeks and if it really isn't better, we would uh, uh, kind of pivot treatment at that point. So some other things that I picked up that I know for a fact worked for me. Number one is this Avene Cyclophate um, Creme Rest Restorative Skin Cream. It's a French brand. So um, this is the Avene Restorative Skin Cream. I bought the small size and then I used that up completely and now I'm on the big size. This cream helped so much with my PD. I can't even tell you. Um, this and one other thing are the things that helped the most. So if you're going to start anywhere, I would definitely start with this. This big tube is a little pricey, but it's a very thick cream. So you really um, would go through it very slowly. I think one of the reasons this worked so well is because there's zinc oxide in it. There's also some form of copper, and both of those really help to like calm red skin, inflame skin. Um, there's, there's just so many simple but good ingredients in here that just help heal skin in general. I read that a lot of people use this after surgeries. Their doctors um, tell them it'll help heal the skin faster. And if it helps heal after surgeries, it should definitely help heal a rash. Um, yeah, this is definitely a miracle worker in my opinion. I still use it at nighttime. I was even using this during the day just to help calm my skin. And I will say every other moisturizer I tried at the time burned my skin. Uh, something that PD really does to your skin is makes it super sensitized. And I felt like everything was making my skin burn and red and it was so uncomfortable. And when I put this on, I felt no burning. I felt relief for the first time in a long time. So highly, highly recommend this. The other thing that my dermatologist said to do immediately was switch to a fluoride-free and SLS-free toothpaste. Um, he recommended one for me, but I just did my own research and I picked up the Hello. It's the anti-plaque and whitening fluoride-free toothpaste and Hello brand is SLS-free in general. So you're, you're good there with any of them that you pick up, but this is the only fluoride-free one, I believe. Um, I've been using it ever since. I absolutely think that made a huge difference. It's super weird, but SLS, sodium lauryl sulfates, um, can really aggravate this type of skin condition. So Beyond the toothpaste, I actually got rid of SLSs in my everyday life in general, but this toothpaste, I definitely saw the biggest difference, um, and it's such an easy transition. Like, of course, it's not going to whiten my teeth as much as the kind of harsher chemical-infused toothpaste, but that didn't really matter to me. I just wanted to get rid of this rash, so highly recommend switching your toothpaste. Okay, the other SLS things I switched out were shampoo, body wash, and hand soap, I believe. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, and face wash. So... Um, body wash was the hardest, so I wanted to give you a recommendation. I have so many like natural body washes, and then I looked in the ingredients, and they had SLS in them. So the only one I found that was sulfate-free that I actually really love is Native Body Washes, which I've talked about before on the channel. So it really worked out that I could just go back to this. Um, I got the Eucalyptus and Mint one. It's my favorite one. Um, really simple ingredient list and it's so hard to find an SLS free body wash because that's kind of what the ingredient that makes uh, the formula suds. Uh, so if you like that experience then you, it'll be hard to get rid of SLS for you but to me I just really wanted to get rid of the rash and I did not care. So this is very effective for being so clean and it's really affordable too so definitely recommend this. Originally the Face wash I was using was already sulfate free, so it's the Vanna Cream Gentle Facial Wash. I'm going to talk about another face wash I switched to, but this one is great if you are looking to go SLS free because of this skin condition. It definitely didn't irritate my skin, it didn't overstrip it, it was very gentle and worked for me for a long time. So I was using this before, like I said, so it just worked out that I had it. Shampoo is a little bit different for everyone so I didn't bring one out here to recommend right now I'm using the Moroccan oil I believe it's the color care which is SLS free <clears throat> but I'm planning on getting the Olaplex shampoo because I love the conditioner and that one is free of sulfates as well so just do research on shampoos SLS is in a lot of shampoos as well but um, there's more options I believe than body wash that's for sure for hand soap, I was using Method hand soap, and that actually does have SLS, even though at Target they say it's clean. So I switched to Myers hand soap, which I don't have it here, but if you guys go to Target, you definitely have Myers there. It's very natural. It works great. I think the hand soap was the least important. You don't really have to switch your hand soap, 
um, at one point I was just so desperate to get rid of this that I would do anything, so that's why I switched the hand soap as well. Okay, so after kind of implementing all of this, my rash severely diminished in the couple weeks that um, I didn't go to the, back to the dermatologist, but it wasn't fully gone. So when I went back, he was like, at this point, I think our only option is to do a round of antibiotics, which like I mentioned is something I didn't want to do because I know that antibiotics just aren't good to be on long term. But he said that I was going to be on, I wrote it down, um, doxycycline for two weeks. And he assured me that um, it was a pretty low dosage and that if it didn't work that they we could again like pivot what we were going to do um, so I wouldn't have to be on antibiotics for a long time. And like I said, a lot of people said their dermatologist put them on antibiotics for like three months for this skin condition and I just think, you you know, I, I think it'll work, but I think that um, doing your own research and kind of figuring out other products that'll help hopefully can kind of diminish that time you have to be on antibiotics. I will say out of everything, I think the antibiotics help the most, which is unfortunate because not only is it not accessible if you don't have health insurance, but it's a little harsh on your system. Like, I'm a little sick right now. And I kind of feel like the antibiotics made my immune system worse because I haven't been sick in a long time. But regardless, the doxycycline definitely helped out of everything. I was on it for two weeks and about a week in, I had already been doing all these things separately that really helped. So it was starting to get better. And I wasn't sure if the antibiotics were really helping that much, but then the second week, I mean, it cleared up completely, and I was just shocked and relieved and so, so happy. A lot of people said when they stopped antibiotic use, it came back immediately. That's why I waited to do this video. It stopped about mm, three weeks ago now, so I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to come back, and then I would have to do some other things to figure out how to get rid of it, um, but it hasn't come back yet. So I definitely think the antibiotics, for me personally, really knocked it out. And that's another thing is um, my doctor and my dermatologist said that this condition is so hard to know what the cause is. Like I said, I don't even know what originally caused the rash by my nose. I know I made it exponentially worse by putting the steroid cream on it, but I still have no idea what caused the original rash. And it can be a fungal, like I said, a bacterial. It can be so many different things. So... Um, my doctor said that because the antibiotics worked for me, that I can pretty much be confident that it was some sort of bacterial infection that I probably contracted topically. So um, nothing in my system, something that touched my skin somehow, and it kind of just transposed from there. While I was taking the antibiotics, I tried some other things when I did further research, and these things completely helped my skin so, so much. Along with the um, Avene cream, these two things really, I mean, are like made for PD in my opinion. The first thing is any sort of diaper cream because of the zinc oxide, but I originally picked up one with about 20% zinc oxide and I saw that it was working, so I immediately went to Target and got this one, which is the Bordeaux's Butt Paste and it's the Max Strength Extra Protection because it has 40% zinc oxide in it. Um, it's so thick and just white and it's just like pure minerals, but this has helped so much and now when I kind of see redness starting to come back like around my nose or see little dots, this is all I really do. I'll put it on at nighttime and in the morning it's like gone. So this is definitely how I'm going to spot treat in the future if this does come back because this skin condition does tend to be cyclical and comes back for people multiple times in a year. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So if it comes back for me, I'm planning on just spot treating with this and hopefully it knocks it out within a day or two because I'm so impressed with how specifically this Max Strength one really gets rid of it and really helps to calm the skin and it just works. I don't know how it works, but it really, really works. The other thing when I was doing research, and you can see the reviews on Amazon, everyone on Amazon said that this face wash cured their PD alone, and it's a Canadian dermatologist brand, so you have to buy it on Amazon if you're in the States like me. It's Spectro Cleanser Blemish Prone Skin. It just says sensitive skin care. It has this purple label. Um, it's super simple. It's just gentle, non-irritating, pH balanced, non-comedogenic. Um, I can't remember what ingredients are in here. Oh, it's uh, water, glycerin, butane, glycol. There's some other things, um, but regardless, it's just very simple. 
and I don't know what is in here that has helped, but for some reason this did work at getting rid of the rash quicker than my Vanna cream. So even though they're both gentle, SLS free, like very safe face washes, something about this formulation does really help PD significantly. Um, I wish I could just like pick it up at my local Target, but it is pretty affordable on Amazon. It's not too crazy. So definitely get this. It helped so much for mine. Okay, some other things that I started taking orally when I got this. Um, I don't know if either of them really contributed to getting rid of my PD, but I'm going to mention them because I saw on Amazon that other people had a positive experience. So number one is Organic India Name, and it's basically like an antibacterial supplement. So I think that this was helping a bit before I actually got on antibiotics, but after that I stopped taking them because I felt like there wasn't really a point. But I definitely don't think it was making it worse, and at that point I was going to try anything. So I think this is worth trying if you have this skin condition and can't get antibiotics. But um, yeah, I definitely didn't make it worse. It possibly made it better, but it's so hard to tell because I was trying so many things. But I wanted to mention it if it helped someone else. Okay, next is raw zinc. Um, like I said, the zinc oxide topically works really well. There's something about zinc in general that really helps the skin condition. It's just a very calming skin ingredient. So I took this and I do think it helped for a long time, but I stopped taking it recently and it hasn't come back. So I don't, I just can't tell how much it helped, but I will say that while taking these, I went through one whole bottle and then this bottle's almost gone. Um, my nails grew so long. So if you're also looking for a way to grow your nails, for some reason, this just, my nails grew so, so long. They've never been long and they were just very healthy. So um, usually your skin and nails and hair kind of go together. So I feel like it was, I was seeing the results in my nails it was definitely helping my skin in some way um, I'm just again not exactly sure and it does say skin and immune system health um, that's what the supplement is for okay, and then as my PD was starting to clear up like completely I was left with very sensitive and red skin um, two things that I'm not used to at all my skin I always thought it was sensitive but after this it's even more sensitive like I just cannot use products I used to use like um, certain AHA and BHA masks I used to love I cannot use them my skin is just too sensitive now and I have way more redness than I used to even though it's cleared it just for some reason it just made my skin red um, so a way to get rid of that is the Ordinary Azelaic Acid Suspension 10%. I've been using this and it has significantly helped diminish the redness in my skin. Um, even I'm breaking out more now than I used to, which honestly I just don't mind because the rash was so bad. I'm like anything is better than that. Um, but this also helps with breakouts. So it helps with breakouts and redness. It has really evened out my skin tone. I'm really impressed with the price. It's like seven or eight dollars. Um, it's a really small, small container. So I ordered backups on Sephora just because I'm going through it pretty quickly. But yeah, there's silicones in this, but it hasn't irritated my skin. So um, I think I could have used this during PD. I don't think it really would have irritated my skin because it's pretty gentle. But I mostly use it after I was already in kind of like in recovery, if you will, um, to really get rid of that redness residual that I had from when I had the rash. Okay, as I mentioned, this rash can be bacteria or fungal. So I did also try a fungal cream. I don't have it here, but I'll link it down below. It's basically like the athlete's foot cream. I bought the generic version at Target. Um, so I'll link down the one I had. I didn't really see a huge difference when using that, but if you're finding that things targeting bacteria aren't working for you, you should transition to targeting with um, fungal products. Like an antifungal cream you can just buy over the counter, as well as sulfur. sulfur. Sulfur is really good for getting rid of fungus. So definitely try those two things if the bacteria route isn't working for you and you can't go to a dermatologist to kind of help you um, guide your path. Okay, then I have some other tips that don't really involve product. The first one is crazy and I didn't do it for so long, but then it helped so much, so I regret not doing it sooner. I read that a lot of people when they had this, their skin is so irritated that they would just like wash their face with water and go to bed without putting anything on their face. And for, I mean, every night I wasn't doing anything besides washing my face gently and then putting this cream on it, but 
it just was kind of in a stagnant place and I felt like I needed to do something different. So for like four nights in a row, I went to sleep without putting anything on my face. It was so like painful and dry and I felt so weird because I'm just such a person that likes their nighttime routine. But it worked so well within those four days. I saw more improvement than I had in like weeks. So if you're kind of in a place where you feel like the treatment you've been doing has been working, but it's not really getting fully healed, definitely recommend just going cold turkey at nighttime and putting nothing on your face and letting the rash dry out. I think it just shows us how resilient our skin is and how amazing it is and that when you do nothing, it can just heal itself. Like, it is wild to me. I don't really know how it works. I even, like, after those days, I just felt, I, like, saw the healing occur, like, I had a lot of uh, flaking happening. It was like my skin was just turning over on its own and healing itself and um, dry patches were just like falling off. It was pretty gross, but I was just so impressed that I wasn't doing anything and my skin was just healing itself. So highly recommend the drying out technique. I definitely think it worked for me and I think it would work for anyone. Um, another thing that you should not do when you have this is exfoliate. At some point, like I said, my skin was so flaky that I tried a physical exfoliation and then a super, super gentle natural chemical exfoliation. And both of them way over irritated my skin, made it so much worse. My face looked like a tomato. I had never seen it so red and irritated. I was honestly really scared that I had really ruined my skin barrier. So I think it's so tempting but you have to just let it be and let it heal itself. Let the flakes just fall off without exfoliating. It can be so uncomfortable, but I think in the long run you'll feel better that you didn't do it because it's going to make it so much worse. The last tip I have is to keep the foundation wearing minimal. A lot of people when I was looking at forums said they just didn't wear foundation for months while they had this. I work in the beauty industry, so I felt like I couldn't go to work with no foundation on. I just felt like I just felt not put together, not myself, so I just stuck with my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, which is a very light, it's like a gel cream. It has a very light tint to it, and I kind of spot concealed. Um, I definitely wouldn't wear anything too heavy. That's kind of blocking in that bacteria on your skin. Like, you want your skin to be able to breathe, but if you want some coverage, I'd just go something with something a bit cleaner um, and lightweight if you can't go without foundation at all. And some things that I read online in the Reddit threads that I was <laughs> looking at that I didn't try but worked for a lot of other people so I wanted to mention. Um, one of them are DIM supplements, D-I-M. They're supposed to help regulate women's hormones which can contribute to this skin condition. Like I said, for me, I definitely think it was something topical and bacteria that gave it to me but um, I've read that hormones can really uh, throw like throw you into this skin condition kind of out of nowhere. So dim supplements seem to really help a lot of people and then switching or going off of birth control. I actually am in the process of switching the birth control pill I'm on um, for unrelated reasons but I do think that it's possible that the one I was on was helping contribute to this condition. I'm not exactly sure but I've read that a lot of people um, when they went off their birth control this went away so it can totally be related to that too. Okay, and the last thing I read was diet changes, kind of getting rid of like eating dairy and gluten and a lot of things like that. When I was really frustrated and I felt like this would never go away, I was going to go get a food allergy test done because I was like, it has to be something I'm eating. Like, I don't know why it won't go away. I don't know why it just appeared out of nowhere. Um, now I know that's not the case, but for other people, it could be the case. So um, my doctor did say that it's not very common for a food allergy to cause this, but I did see a lot of people in the threads I was looking at um, talk about how their diet completely clear cleared their skin. So even though my doctor said that, I think that everyone's different and if that works for you, then that's great. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to do that. I'm pretty stubborn with how I eat, so I was very happy I didn't have to do that, but if you have tried everything, I would definitely look into getting a food allergy test um, or just the elimination diet to figure out what's really causing that in your skin. Okay, and that was everything I did to get rid of my perioral dermatitis. Like I said, the main, main things for me were the antibiotics, the doxycycline, but there are um, other ones that I know work for this skin condition. They just said this one was pretty popular. The antibiotics, the Spectro face wash, um, the Avene cyclophate cream, and then the the zinc oxide diaper rash cream. If you're gonna try anything, I would definitely start there. I think that those things could heal your skin, honestly. Um, 
and yeah I hope you enjoyed this I hope it helps someone I was really frustrated when I felt like it wasn't gonna get better and I was just gonna look like that the rest of my life so I'm really relieved that it cleared up for me and I hope that this helps other people in their skincare journey too